Hello, in this video we are going to cover the most efficient method of passive solar desalination that has been developed to date. This system was developed by students at the MIT. Water scarcity is a huge problem around the world. The UN has warned that around 5 billion people could face water shortages by the year 2050. Currently there are 844 million people one in nine of the world's population who do not have clean water close to home, and 785 million people remain without any access to clean drinking water. So it is a growing problem that will affect most of the population in the years to come. Although we have developed several solutions to mitigate the problem and these include recycling of water, reduction of water use, and seawater desalination, but even with these in place, population growth will stress our freshwater resources. Because we need water not just for drinking, but also for agriculture and industrial use. Large-scale seawater desalination techniques like multi-stage flash, multiple effect distillation, and reverse osmosis are being used, but they are energy intensive processes. They also require strong infrastructure of energy and water supply. Therefore, these technologies are afforded by countries that are developed and wealthy. On the other hand, we have places that do not even have grid electricity. For such regions, a variety of passive solar desalination techniques have been developed. However, the problem with these technologies is that they are not very efficient, which consequently means a large area and build structure is required for solar desalination setup. This increases the cost. In the last decade, there have been attempts to circumvent this efficiency limitation. One such attempt has been by the MIT students. They have developed a system which has achieved a record high solar to vapor efficiency value of 385%. They were able to achieve a very high water evaporation rate of 5.78 liters per meter square per hour. This design is called Thermally Localized Multi-Stage Solar Still or TMSS for short. This system is simple in its design. What sets it apart from other systems is that it recycles the heat that is released during condensation. The system comprises of different layers, each having a separate function. The topmost layer is made up of high absorption surface. The second layer that is directly behind the absorption layer is a wicking membrane. In the experimental setup at the MIT, a kitchen towel was used as a wicking membrane. One end of the kitchen towel was dipped into the seawater. Next, there was an air gap followed by a condensing plate. To enable faster water collection and removal, hydrophobic coating that is Teflon on aluminum plates was used. Condensed water was collected at the bottom of the condensing plates and was channeled into a bigger reservoir. In this system used at the MIT, up to 10 stages of this arrangement were used. That is, the wicking membrane and the condenser plate with an air gap were repeated one after the other. As the heat builds up on the condenser, it spreads out to the latter stages. It has been suggested that the stages can be increased, but the returns will diminish. Even with five stages, the TMSS outperforms any other passive solar desalination system that has been developed to date. This system also takes care of another problem that most desalination plants face. It is that of salt crystals or brine accumulation. When water is wicked using any capillary effect enhancing material like a foam or kitchen towel in this case, then salt starts accumulating and crystallizes on the surfaces of the wicking material. This crystallized salt reduces the efficacy of the system. However, during the nighttime when the system is not active, the salt is sucked back into the seawater. The reason is that the higher concentration of salt on the wicking surface starts diffusing back into the seawater, which has a relatively lower concentration. The TMSS system can be made to float over water, thus reducing costs associated with the grounded structure in the seawater. If this technology is further developed and tested on a large scale, it could be extremely useful in areas where electricity is scarce or very expensive, but seawater and sunlight are abundant. Two possible applications for this system have been mentioned by the researchers. The first uses TMSS panels 
floating on salt water capable of supplying fresh water to people on shore by means of pipes. The second is for domestic use. It utilizes a flat panel on a shallow tank containing seawater. The researchers estimate that a system with a solar collection area of about one square meter could meet a single person's daily drinking water requirements. As the system does not use any exotic materials, the production cost can be kept low. Note that for the experiments at the MIT, aerogel was used as an insulation which is an expensive material, but cheaper alternatives can also be used. It is estimated that a system built to meet the needs of a family would cost about $100. Note that the system was not only tested in lab conditions but also in real life. Even though the system performance in real conditions dropped by 40%, it is still way above any other passive desalination system in the market. It had a record high productivity of 2.6 liters per kilowatt hour in real life conditions. This is very high for a passive solar desalination system and nearly matches the best atmospheric water generation system. But they use high grade energy that is electricity rather than solar heat flux as input. And with this the video is concluded. For more details check the link in the description section. Thank you for your attention.